Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the Wrestling Paradox Podcast. What's up? It's a different episode. It's a different episode. This is part of our new week, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. And today we have written our own pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. I think I'm doing three million at the gate. <laughs> all right that's right baby we are doing our own pay-per-views tonight is custom pay-per-view night here at the wrestling paradox podcast first of all we'd like to welcome y'all back once again uh we appreciate everybody tuning in lately we see the views growing the subscribers growing so we appreciate that um tonight here at the podcast we're doing something a little different uh usually it's a topic night but we're gonna get away from topics and we're gonna make up our own topic we're gonna have some arguments over some uh fake shows about fake wrestling (laughs) chris explain what we're doing here okay so i came up with the idea a couple days ago that um we always armchair quarterback and monday morning quarterback um pay-per-views and how we would write stuff so i went to joe and i said how about we write our own pay-per-view we each write it um, there's stipulations, six matches. One of them has to be a Survivor Series S. I have match. seven. I have seven. Mine includes a pre-show match. Oh, I have seven too. So we allowed pre-show pre-show matches. Um, I can tell you guys that my pay-per-view is four pages long. <laughs> How? <laughs> I will not be sitting through this college seminar. No, my, I mean, mine's. I mean, I can breeze through it, but I also named my pay per view. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> and I have announcers and a ring announcer too. And I picked you did better than me, son. And I picked a, a um a location, a location, and I the attendance that I predicted for the. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Bro? I just put some matches together, and I was like, "Yeah, this looks good." <laughs> All right, so you want to open up with your first match, your pre-show match? You want to go match for match? Is that how we're doing this? Yeah, we can. Okay, your pre-show match. Okay, well, my pay-per-view is called A Shot at Destiny 2020. So my pre-show match, it's one match. It's a 20-man battle royal. When it gets down to the final two participants, it will begin, it will begin a traditional wrestling match. Winner of said match will get a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship at any time. So it's kind of like a Money in the Bank, Casino Royale-esque. Participants, Luchasaurus, The Miz, Sammy Callahan, Rich Swan, Mustafa Ali, Brody King, PCO, NJF with Wardlow, Orange Cassidy, Ace Austin, John Morrison, Marco Stunt, Bandito, Phoenix, Pentagon, Darby Allen, Moose, Nakamura, Alex Ocean. Hey, CCW, CCW, CCW. And Rhino. Rhino? Yep. All right. I thought you said Ryan O. I'm like, who's Ryan O? <laughs> uh, so just to go through, a big spot of the match, Rhino is trying to throw Moose over his shoulders over the top rope. Alex Ocean goes to the top rope and hits a Canadian destroyer on Moose from the Rhino holding him. The final four is Ace Austin, Darby Allen, Moose, and Birdie King. Birdie King eliminates Allen. Moose eliminates Ace Austin. Match starts with Moose hitting King and he, with a huge spear. Goes for cover, but King can, kicks out. PCO comes back down to the ring, distracts Moose. King hits a super kick, picks Moose up for a power bomb into the corner, turnbuckle. Moose falls into King's arms. King hits Cradle Power Driver for the win. King is now has a shot at the championship at any time. Very nice. You uh, you really put some work into this, man. You shit on me. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking shit on me. Yeah, I, I got I got participants. I got winners. That's what you get. <laughs> but then we could talk about the winners. You yeah. Know? So you got Moose losing in the final two, huh? Yep. And he's not the champion of my said federation. Oh, okay. What is your federation called? I don't know. 
It's still a Mine's thing. Mine's JWF. Oh. Huh. Jerk offs walk fast? Exactly. Mm. You read my mind, Princess. But I will I will wait. I have to go through. I have announcers. It's Jim Ross, Excalibur, and Corey Graves. Well, I'm turning off your show already. <laughs> and the ring and the ring announcer is the old school WCW ring announcer, David Penzer. Oh, very nice. I got I got Bruce Buffer for all mine. Oh, of course. Not Michael. No one likes Michael. <laughs> <laughs> all right um that's a pretty good setup there nice little 20 man battle royal to open it up that's a good 40 minute spot you can fill up right there mm-hmm. pull everybody in but see for me i'm pulling everybody in in a more traditional way a tag team match and my tag team match on the pre-show do you want to take a wild guess on who um uh santana and ortiz versus Come on, man. Give me some fucking credit here, dude. I'm putting together this show of the decade. Jungle Boy and Mark Come on, Stein. man. Give me some fucking credit here. I got FTR versus mm-hmm. the North. Let me tell you something, Chris. Since you have mentioned the North on this podcast, I have ran my little fat ass over to YouTube. And I have watched <laughs> a good couple hours of the North. And boy, oh boy, those are some fucking bangers, dude. Let me tell you, I would love to see them in the the, the revival go at it. I think that would be great. Hey, how do you like their finisher? Where Josh Alexander has him up on the show and then he slingshots spine busting. Yeah, yeah. And that's, it's, it's so wild. cool. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. It's such a great tag team move, and I think both of those tag teams represent everything about ta- everything that the North does. Again, how I've said it before, is pure tag team. Right, cutting the ring in half, knowing where your corner is, keeping the opponent in your corner getting heat on him that's what that's what tag teams are supposed to do and mm-hmm. that's what ftr does and that's what the north does mm-hmm. um in this match uh it's always the long gone uh thing of ftr can't win the big one well, unfortunately they can't win the big one here either i got the north going over on the pre-show match lasts in about 25 minutes interesting okay that's it. i like that i like that yeah. yes the North and FTR will be making an appearance on my pay-per-view, but on Very the main nice. show. On the main show. Well, mm-hmm. see, my my uh, you guys will know here shortly what my pre-show was going to be, and it was going to lock you in. Definitely going to lock you in. But I switched some things around. I reached out to our buddy. Uh, I, you know, I did a lot of work booking the show and getting the talent. So I reached out to my boy, Mikey Blackstock. You know, you remember Mikey Blackstock. No, so, no one, no one remembers him. Yeah, and no one his show is archived. <laughs> anyway, I reached out to Mikey Blackstock, and he produced some. Sh- he produced it for me. He helped me put it together. Placement of matches. We really worked hard on this for you people, and we hope you enjoy it. <laughs> this is the show of the decade. We put it together like Dana White, Fight Island. Yeah. Okay, so my first match on the main card. This is how I hook everybody in. You ready for this? Give it to for, me. First match. It's a singles match for the TNT title. So your so your federation has the TNT title in it. Yeah, yeah. it has every title in it. Um, for first match, single match, Will Ospreay versus the champion Sammy Guevara. Ooh, I left Will Ospreay off my card. I couldn't At, get him a visa. He couldn't get over here in time. Match goes sixteen minutes and twenty four seconds. Santana and Ortiz jump Osprey while the ref is down. Sammy hits a big four fifty splash for the one two three to retain the TNT title. Dude, you fucking put some work in it. You got this shit down to the seconds, bro. What have you been doing for the past fucking three days? <laughs> Fuck, I haven't heard from you. I've been calling you. Don't fucking answer. Now I know what you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to talk about it. You were so excited about all this shit. Dude, and my second match is a banger. Oh, my second match is a banger. That's a very good match. Sammy Guevara, Will Ospreay, that's a lot of high flying. That is two, not small, but two smaller sized guys who can move around the ring and do the 450s and do the 360s and do the jumps and the flips and everything. And that's a good match. That's a very good match. I, I, I that's an old school. Sir. That's an old school WCW. How they I open. applaud you, sir. Yes, that's an old How school cruiserweight open. match. Yep, exactly. That's an old school cruiserweight match. So my first match on the main card is uh, it's got some it's got some ladies in it, mm. some very exciting ladies. We have Tessa Blanchard 
versus Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte versus Penelope Ford. <laughs> Do you know who I got coming out on the top? You know it's fun. All right, yes, go ahead. I got Ford coming out on top over Charlotte, mm. pulling off the big win. Okay. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, like, she's going for the figure eight, but, like, Penelope Ford somehow slips out of it and then, like, does, like, a quick roll-up and then get, grabs the tights one, two, three, heel way to kind of win kind of thing. You know how she does that Matrix shit where she, like, bends backwards? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Like, the, the figure eights get ready to get put in. You know, we have uh, Charlotte eliminating Tessa Blanchard, which sets up for NXT, bringing Tessa in NXT. And then, you know, the biggest card in the world, Tessa got eliminated first. You know, right. and then Rhea Ripley comes in and, uh, you know, uh, P- Penelope Ford upsets Rhea Ripley, gets her out of there, boom. And you're down Penelope Ford and Charlotte. And, you know, Charlotte's the whole big old, it's in my genes. I'm genetically built for this. And Penelope Ford's like, fuck you, look at my tits. Boom, mm. one, two, three. You know what I'm saying? I, I got Penelope Ford, baby, all the way. AEW, what's up? So that's your first match, right? That's my first match. I'm unloading. I like it. I like it. You ready for my second match? Let's hear it, baby. My second match is a fatal four-way. It's Jordan Grace versus Penelope Ford versus Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Yo! <laughs> I fucking love you. You're my best friend. You are my best friend in the entire world. You may not be my best man at my wedding, but you are my best friend. I fucking love you, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a pop. What a pop. What a pop. Wait, who do you have winning? Please tell me you got Penelope Ford winning. Match goes 15 minutes and 12 seconds. Big spot of the match. Penelope Ford does a shooting star press to the three other girls on the outside. Match ends when Jordan Grace does a running powerbomb to Rhea Ripley for the one, two, three. Oh, you almost had me. I had the underdog coming out on top. <laughs> you know Penelope Ford going into these matches is the underdog. Yeah, I like Jordan Grace, though. I like Jordan Grace. Yo, I just came everywhere in my room. <laughs> how you like that, ladies? That's how we're starting this show. That is how we're starting this show. All right. I need to calm down. Hold on. I need to drink water. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. All right. You ready for my second match of the night? Yeah. My second match of the night is going to take you a while, folks, to get through. This is not a 30-man or not a 30-minute, not an hour. But we're going new school here. We're going 45-minute Iron Man match. (laughs) Hair versus hair match. (laughs) Seth Rollins, Jungle Boy. See, you asked me about this the other day. The only problem I have with that match is – they don't match up. It's the styles, baby. You put them yeah. together, they'll do magic. The the architect versus the up and coming, able to work. I mean, anybody's worked with in, in uh, AEW, he's done well against. He always works well. It does not matter who's in the ring, he works well against them. Big guy, little guy. Who do you have winning? Who do I have winning? Yeah. I have Jungle Boy pulling the upset five to four in overtime. I, the only reason is because I can't see Jungle Boy cutting his hair. I do see Seth Rollins with short hair. We've seen it before, I believe. It's interesting. I like Jungle Boy winning in the overtime five to four. I, I, I think it's good. Match goes an hour and th- or, uh, 48 minutes and 37 seconds with 20.4 or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we're going to go like 48 minutes, 49 minutes. So go just about four or five minutes after, after the bell rings. But, but we're going, we're going overtime, baby. You know, no, you never, you know, an Iron Man match is never won within the time limit. Right. Never, never. Right. So why would it happen at Joe's wrestling federation? Okay. Well, I'll, I see your hair versus hair match and I'll raise you. My third match is an elimination tag match. The Young Bucks versus the North versus the Good Brothers versus FTR. Match goes 18 minutes and 31 seconds. Who comes out first, second, third, fourth? Bucks get eliminated first at the nine-minute mark. FTR is eliminated at the 14-minute mark. 
the North gets the win with their slingshot spine buster on Carl Anderson. Very nice. Carl Anderson takes that move? Yep. Very nice. Very nice. I like it. I like that match. That's a good match. Mm-hmm. That's a good match. I'll bring you right in. I'll, I would suck you right in from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I'm winning right now. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a traditional tag match. I have a fatal four-way. I had a hair versus hair Iron Man match. You don't see these things anywhere, Chris. This isn't the UWF. <laughs> <laughs> um, very nice. I do like that match. That's a very good match there. I, I, I like the North winning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we both had the North winning on our shows. Very mm-hmm. good. Very good. Um, not bad, Chris. Not bad. I give you that. I give you that. Any any high spots? Um, no. Putting you on the spot, bitch. You know, <laughs> I, it's a regular tag team. It's a traditional t- tag elimination tag match. Just yeah. say that, because I mean, you just have the young bucks that would do the you know the flip flies and dives. The North doesn't do them. Good Brothers don't do them, and FTR doesn't do them. So that's yeah. why I put the young bucks in there. Um, get them out first, then you go to a basically a three way elimination tag match. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Well, we got the big matches rolling. So as we might as well get in some big men. So my next match is a big man, eight man elimination match. <laughs> we have Brock Lesnar versus Wardlow versus Keith Lee versus Moose. Versus Luchasaurus versus Braun Strowman versus Samoa Joe, Joe, Joe versus Otis. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm already going to the bathroom on this one. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Uh, You're about yeah. to get some high spots by my dog Keith Lee. And Every, anything with Brock Lesnar and Keith Lee in it, I'm not watching. Bro, come on. You knew you were glued at Royal Rumble. Get out of here, bro. This match is this is my middle match. It's for people to go to the bathroom. You yeah, exactly. A lot of high spots. Yeah. I'm giving you a little break in between. Don't worry. My next match is going to blow you out of the water because technically, I think it could be one of the best matches ever produced. And that's just uh-huh. not me saying it. I think you're going to agree with me how great my next match is. But this match, um, I finally have my high spot for my boy, Joe, Joe, Joe. And Joe is coming out with the win, taking out Brock Lesnar. That's interesting. I mean, I like Joe and the, the winning that. Yeah. <clears throat> I just don't know with so many big men in there. Uh, well, that's why it's called the eight man big man. Yeah. With Otis, though. Like, I mean, yeah. look, Otis is only in there because he's banging that hot bitch. Okay. All right. That's it. I'm okay, kayfaving yeah. the shit out of my shit. Yo, Otis, I'm calling you for this match, but you got to bring your girl, too. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Mindy Mandy, Ro- Rose. Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose, yeah. Okay, so I see your Probably third. We almost had another Mindy Codwell sighting. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I see your third match, and I'll it's raise a, it's you. It's not a great match. It's not a great no. match, but it is a, it's a big man match. It's for the guys who like the bigger guys, the heavyweights. You know, you want to see some stones collide. You want to see some walls not move, things like that. I'm hoping the ring just fucking collapses and they all die. Um, yeah, but, but the problem is, <laughs> with the problem with that is you have too much of it with an eight-man but, the, my, but here's the thing. You don't have any more big men the rest of my card. I'm giving see, you all my big men one shot. Just get it out of the way. Because my next match, the four, my fourth match is just a singles match. Um, it's a big man match. It is something that I've wanted for the past month. Is it Brock Lesnar versus Keith Lee? No. <laughs> it's something I want. And they're from a, both from AEW. It's Brian Cage and Taz versus Lance Archer with Jake Roberts. Come on, bro. You're going to have Jake the Snake get in the ring? No, no, no. It's, I'm not, it's not a tag match. It's a singles match. They're, they're put managers. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Go ahead. Match goes 15 minutes and 25 seconds. Brian Cage gets the win when Lance Archer gets distracted by Brody Lee. Brian Cage hits the White Claw Driller for the one, two, three. Brody Lee attacks Jake Roberts and recruits Lance Archer to Dark Order. Oh, <laughs> Cody's watching this. We might fucking get that in like three weeks. <laughs> they're trying to figure out to do Lance Archer, and they're like, 
Oh, Brody. Exactly. Those guys said that. <laughs> um, very see, it's nice. not. It's it's a big man match, but it's not a let. It's kind of like a letdown match, you know, yeah. in between the big matches. So yeah, it, it tells a story. Very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. That's that's a good match. We may see that one day. We may. <laughs> Uh, when Brian Cage folds to the middle of the card, just like every big name goes in there and does. Seriously. FTR, they fucking floundered that whole thing, bro. I'm so upset. You know what I'm talking about. Don't stare at me like I'm an idiot. I'll come through this fucking computer and knock your eyes straight on. (laughs) Um, All right, so my next match. This is a... This is going to be more technical. This is going to be for the more of a wrestling fan. Um, oh, Timothy Thatcher. Okay, cool. Fuck Timothy Thatcher. Yes. All right. Um, no, this is going to be Daniel Bryant mm-hmm. versus you know, you know who? No. I have a feeling you guess. No? No. Maxwell Jacob Friedman. That would be a fun match. It's not really a technical match. That's going to be a technical match. Neither guy is really going to lead the round too much, except maybe a headbutt here and there. But other than that, man, that's going to be a you're not you're not popping over that match happening. No, dude, get the fuck out of here, bro. What? Are you kidding no. me? The greatest mouthpiece in the in the game right now versus one of the most technical wrestlers in the game. <laughs> you had you had everyone in New Japan that you could have picked from. And you picked MJF Sorry. to go Sorry. against Daniel I, Bryan. You know what? I, I did. I did. I did. And you know what? Honestly, I really didn't go I didn't really didn't go to New Japan in my in my thing. I went with what I was really familiar with. And you I'm sorry went, for doing that. You could have went Jay White. You could have went Marty. Oh, I got Jay White somewhere on my card. Watch your mouth. You could have went Koto Ibushi. You could have went Okada. But come on, bro. I'm going to new school. <sighs> I'm going MJF. new school versus I did. Do you want to know why? Because this match and MJF winning this match is going to what's push push MJF to star power to the next level, taking out D. Bry, forcing Daniel Bryan to retire a second time and not come back. MJF is going to put Daniel Bryan on a shelf and let Brie, Brie Bella stare at him the rest of his life while he has a broken fucking neck sitting in the corner and he can't hold Bridie because he can't move. After MJF gets done with him. Do I need to cut more of this promo, or do you get the picture? No, I just don't like the match. Get out of here, bro. I just worked my <laughs> heart out for you, and you can't give me that. Just don't like the match. I Thank love God. the match. I love the match. It's one of my favorite technical wrestlers. One of, one of, if not the greatest mouthpiece we've heard since fucking The Rock. I'm sorry. I don't care what you say, bro. MJF is the future of all that is wrestling. I mean, but I, you said it was going to be the most technical wrestle. wrestle it is. Wrestle match. It's going to be – MJF's going to keep it on the ground, and that's where Daniel Bryan thrives. I wouldn't classify as MJF as a technical wrestler. MJF is a ground wrestler. He doesn't go to top ropes. He doesn't do that crazy shit. We've talked about this numerous times. He looked up to people like fucking Arn Anderson and Ric Flair and Tully. He looked up to those wrestlers who stayed on the ground and he didn't okay, go crazy. Uh, 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 right, 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 right. Okay, so now you're you're misconstruing words. He's more of a traditional wrestler. Okay, a traditional wrestler and yeah, a technical yeah, wrestler. Okay, I'm sorry. They're two different things. There's a two different. But things. it's still going to be a good match. Because technical wrestler is like kind of like Timothy Thatcher, Daniel Bryan, how they do like the you know. Is Ric Flair considered a technical wrestler? No, traditional wrestler. Ric Flair is considered a traditional wrestler. Mm-hmm. Would Jimmy F- Superfly Snooker be considered technical? No. Why not? Because he did the, the the dives off the top rope and everything like that. Techn- technical wrestler would be like Timothy Thatcher. Could be like an Oni Larkin. Um, anyone okay, that- give me two guys not not within the past fucking ten years. What? Give me two guys not within the past fucking year, two years ago. Give me other people. Prince Ikea. Okay. Anyone else? You said not in the past ten years. I'm done with this fucking conversation. <laughs> go to your next match. Because that, that match sells out anywhere. I don't care what you say. But go ahead. 
<laughs> you could also if I put that. a show on if I put a show on and say, hey guys, there's only one match at this show. It's taking place at such and such arena tonight, and it's MJF versus Daniel Bryant for one hour. You don't think that place is selling out? You also could have said Daniel Bryan versus Austin Aries, too. All right. I'm throwing Austin Aries in there as a triple threat, but it's still <laughs> MJF winning. Um, go to your next match. All right. My fifth match is a Survivor Series match. Okay. On one team, it's Kenny Omega, Okada, Marty Scroll, Jay White, Jungle Boy versus Jericho, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, and Jay Lethal. Okay. Match goes 32 minutes and 36 seconds. The last four are Jungle Boy and Omega versus Styles and Lethal. Omega hits V trigger on Lethal to eliminate him. So it's Jungle Boy and Omega versus Styles. Omega is knocked to the outside. Jungle Boy has Styles down. He goes to the top rope. MJF runs down, crotches Jungle Boy on the top rope. Styles gets up, lifts Jungle Boy for the Styles clash and eliminates him. Last two are Omega and Styles. Omega hits multiple V triggers and Snapdragon suplexes, lifts him for the one wing angel. Kota Ibushi comes out, super kicks Omega, and Styles gets the cover for the what one. What's all these interferences? Ibushi turns on Omega after years of friendship. What is up with all these? What is up with all these interferences in your pay per view, man? Can you not control these fucking wrestlers? No, you, this is just like how a, it was a pay per view before AEW started. You got to start before the, the federation has its name. You got to start storylines. I that's a lot of that's a lot of interferences, man. If I'm a fan at home, I'm thinking, man, guy, can we just get through a match without a problem here? Well, what is this man running this company? Also, also, Brody Lee wasn't on the card, wasn't, and he made a surprise appearance. Kota Ibushi wasn't on the card, he made a su- surprise appearance. So, okay, I see where you're going there. I see mm-hmm. where you're going there. Okay, well, my Survivor Series next match is next, and I like your Survivor Series match. I will give you credit; it's a nice match. Who'd you have getting the win, Styles? No. Um, oh, yeah, Styles. Styles. Yeah, Styles. Styles getting the win. Okay, cool. Over Omega. I like that. Over Omega. I like that. So st- it, it comes down to Styles and Omega in one of my other matches, too. Well, it doesn't come down to them, but they're both in one of my matches. Mm-hmm. Um, I should never told you that now because I ruined it. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> my next match is my Survivor Series match as my co main event of the evening. Mm-hmm. Fighting out of the blue corner, we have. Adam Page, Cody, Gallows, and Anderson, and their fifth partner, fifth partner who is a surprise entrant for the evening, Sammy Callahan, brought in for this match. Okay. Next, Ricky Starks. We don't know who the other team is. Ricky Starks makes his way to the stage. Ricky Starks is standing on the stage. Does I'm I'm all wing I'm winging this people I just hope you know this it sounds good in my head so I'm just spitting it out. Ricky Starks makes his way to the stage, stands at the top, turns around, and the back of his shirt says "Draped in Gold." Undisputed Era comes out. Hmm. So we have Undisputed Era and Ricky Starks versus Adam Page, Cody, Sammy Callahan, Gallows, and Anderson. Somewhere in the match, Adam Cole will be in a standoff with Cody and Gallows and Anderson. He will throw up the two sweet to try and get on the right side of them. They turn their back on him and they drop him. Eliminate Cody eliminates Adam Page or Adam Cole. Last man standing, Ricky Starks is in the ring by himself after pinning Cody for retribution on the TNT title match. I just made all that up in my head. It sounded good though, right? I mean, I like it. I like Ricky Starks. I've been a fan. I, 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 I knew of him. I'm not going to bullshit and say I was a huge fan. And, oh, my God, he's my favorite wrestler since, like, 10 years ago. No. I just learned about Ricky Starks this year, and I am falling in love with this guy more and more than I see him on my TV. He is amazing. Everything yeah, he crippled does, Darby Allen. Dude, he, he crippled Darby <laughs> Allen. He is a comedian in the right spots. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was holding back uh, – uh, what's her name? Um – the women's champion. Sheeta. 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 Holding back Sheeta. And he had his hands like this against her waist. And he's like, wait, I'm not touching you. Don't worry. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's he's funny in all the right spots, man. Ricky Starks is really growing on me. He deserves to be the last man standing for this match. And because of that reason, I'm giving him a title shot on the first night. Okay. 
All right. So go ahead. Let's hear it. What you got? All right. My main event is for the heavyweight championship. I have no titles on my. I have no titles on my shit. We're going into this like WCW. No titles mean nothing. Turn in all your titles. <laughs> you got the champion John Moxley versus the challenger Eddie Edwards in a no DQ match. Ooh, I like match. That. I don't know a lot about Eddie Edwards, but I, I've I've watched a little bit of him here and there. Guys are good. Guys are really good. Match goes 26 minutes and 21 seconds. Both men get color. Eddie Edwards hits Mox with multiple kendo shots, kendo stick shots. He brings Mox to the top of the ramp. He goes to throw Mox off the stage through a table, but Mox reverses it and hits the paradigm shift off the stage through a table. But Edwards lands with his arm across Mox's chest. Ref counts one, two, three. Eddie is the champ. Ooh. You're burying Mox on your first pay-per-view. It's not a good look. He'll be leaving your company in about three years saying he wasn't grateful. Lights go out. They come back on. Brody King appears on the stage with a ref. He drags Edwards to the ring, picks him up, and delivers the cradle pile driver. Covers covers him for the one, two, three. Brody King is your new champion. Mox comes to the ring, hits King with a chair, Hits him with the paradigm shift, gets on the mic, and says he was screwed and he wants King next. Fades to black. I like fades to black because my show fades to black too. <laughs> There's no celebrating in the ring. There's no celebrating in the ring. It's just Mox covered in blood on the mic calling that he wants King next, and it just fades to black. I like it. I like it. I got goosebumps from that. And the location. <laughs> By the way, location, Cleveland, Ohio. Attendance, 21,549. There's only one There's only one arena in this world that deserves my pay-per-view, and that's Madison Square Garden, baby. Ugh. Ugh, don't ugh me. Only legends fight at MSG. All right. My final match of my pay-per-view. We know AJ Styles is no mega, isn't it? Is brought to you by <laughs> the Bullet Club. Mm -hmm. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor versus Omega versus Jay White. Okay. It's an elimination match. We have AJ Styles taking out Omega. Old finger bang, happy McFinger fuck bang is out first. I'm sorry. You beat up Marco Stunt, but I, I still don't like you, Omega. Until you're Japan Omega again. Mm -hmm. um, next, Jay White takes out AJ Styles. Okay, Final I like that. Comes out to Finn or Prince Devitt, we will call him for this match, versus Jay White. We have Finn winning the match. We have a curtain call esque at the end. All four members are up, hugging each other, posing to the fans, blah, blah, blah. Bullet Club music drops. Out comes all of Bullet Club. They get in the middle of the ring. They hug. They congratulate. Next thing you know, Tom and Tonka leads the charge. They start taking out everybody. The Bullet Club isn't about four members. It's about the club itself. What's old is old. What's dead is dead. The new blood shall rise. Fades to black with the Bullet Club standing over four bloody former members of the Bullet Club. You know, I like that. But I have to poke holes in that. <laughs> poke some holes, baby, because I'm here for it. That already happened. That's okay. I'm, I'm visualizing oh, okay. in, my, in my life. Oh, I was going to say, that happened like last year when they All turned four of them? on... Yeah, they um, no, uh, not Tom, Finn, Tom, AJ, and Omega, and Jay White. No, all the time. no, 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 but no, not those. But it's um, you had uh, Tomatonga, Bad Luck Valet, Haku. Um, they turned on um, Omega, Young Bucks, and Hangman Page at the Cow Palace in New Japan and USA or New Japan LA last year, last January, I think it was. 
Gotcha. Well, I'm glad I rewrote it in my life. Yeah, because I was like, man, I, don't, I know for a fact he didn't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't catch that one. I, that one. I was like, I know for a fact he did not watch that at all. Damn, dog. Thanks for giving me some credit here, man. You made me sound like a dickhead fan on this fucking thing. Thanks, you wrote bro. it, though, but you wrote it. So it's it like, sounded good. It sounded yeah. good, dude. That's a good match. That's a great match to end with. It is a good match. How many people um, were in attendance? 200,000. We were at okay. Woodstock. Uh, <laughs> in Ma- in no, Madison I mean, Square Garden, where they hang yeah. out the rafters. <laughs> just like Owen Hart, baby. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I hope you didn't have nah, man, I don't. I don't know what. 18,000, 20,000 inside Madison. Mm-hmm. We did the gate, 2 million. You know, we're, our pay per view buys were out the window. <laughs> Wait, were they out the window? Like, it was a free pay per view, or you just didn't count them? <laughs> no, no, we counted them. We counted them. <laughs> I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the Tommy Dreamer excuse. If everybody had bought it, we would have had enough TV to get money. Or enough money to get on TV. Did you hear really blame that on House of Horrors? Oh well. He had they counted seventy thousand people stole the pay per view of House of Horrors. Yeah. Tommy Dreamer said that money equivalently would have been enough to put him on TV. Well, he was, thanks to everybody that stole it, we will never get on TV. Well, I remember what that card was. It was Matt Stryker versus James Ellsworth. Um, and everyone was on Periscopes, like, stealing it and yeah. everything like that. And his card was so big that night that he actually had, a, like, a local New York like TV that he could have gotten if it had, like, enough viewership. But there was only, like, 2,000 people bought it and, like, yeah, 70,000 no. streamed it. Stole it, yeah. yeah. So... I felt kind of bad for Tommy Dreamer there. Yeah, it sucks. So, your pay per view outlasted my pay per view, but this was an AEW versus NXT. We were a lot closer, I think, than what we could say. My big man match might have dropped the ball in the middle of the show, but I feel like every match I produced was pretty good. Uh, I think Ricky Starks winning the Survivor Series match is the highlight of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, dude, the more I think about it, just how I was spitting it out there, just talking shit. Ricky Stark's coming out, and you don't know who the team is. And he turns around, and the back of his shirt says draped in gold. <laughs> so fucking, that was so fucking cool, man, just to see that one day. Oh, bro, I'd fucking die. Um, all right. So, anyway, your, your pay per view wins tonight. I will give you that. Shit on yours. Shit you, on you, yours. I, I wouldn't say shit, I yeah. would say exceeded. It had diarrhea on yours. You're just being you're being facetious now. <laughs> um. So let's talk about this week in wrestling. Or this the past couple of weeks in wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, some real things going on right now. Um. So SummerSlam was moved to Performance Center. <laughs> like that was a shocker. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go. I mean, the biggest thing is all the signings that Impact had. Dude. Bro, EC3, Heath. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. EC3, you had Heath Slater, you had Eric Young, you had the Good Brothers, and you had Brian Myers, a.k.a. Kurt Hawkins. Um, July 18th, when the the 90 Days ran out, uh, Gallows and Anderson had a podcast that was called, you know, Countdown to Fuck Down, and it was about an hour and a half, two hours long, and I listened to it. Man, the stories that they had, the storylines they had set up for them in January of 2019, they, they sat down with the Young Bucks in California and the Young Bucks laid it all out on the table for them and said, we're starting this new promotion. We're going to have TV deal. We want you, blah, 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 blah. Well, the Good Brothers were like, yeah, sure, we're down. They go to Tokyo. They end up, that's when they tagged with um, Triple H in a six man tag. Uh-huh. Triple H offered him a contract extension there. And it was like $200,000 on top of what they were asking for. So they had to sign it. Uh-huh. Wow. But the storyline is um, what was going to happen when Mox first signed with AEW, he was in New Japan. Um, with the United States or the IWGP US Championship, he won it. They were going to have Carl Anderson go down, jump him, beat him up, have Gallows come down. They were going to jump and beat him up, blah, blah, blah. Then the first episode of Dynamite, Mox was going to be there. 
Carl Anderson was going to come down and Gallows were going to come down and they were going to jump him again. And it was going to have this like big storyline, like just skyrocket. And Gallows and Anderson hating themselves because of that. They didn't, yeah. they didn't make the move. Well, they got promised the money. And at that point, man, you got to take the money when it comes to your family mm -hmm. and the security of a job, because I mean, you look at it nowadays, the security of a job, no one's, no one's job is guaranteed unless you're a McMahon or a Helmsley. Right. Other than that, everybody is replaceable. You can get dropped like at the drop of a dime. Um, so and they got fired two weeks after having a WrestleMania match. They were a headliner in a part of one of the biggest WrestleMania matches in what do you say a headliner? Well, well they were yes, a part they had of a big they had a big part in that match. Yeah, right. but it was I mean, that's got I mean, that's gotta be a feather in the hat, honestly, for them. To say, oh, yo, yeah. we were a part of Undertaker's last match at WrestleMania. Right. You know, so, it, I, mean, that, I mean, that just sucks for them. But And then after that, Undertaker signed a 15-year contract extension. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's just going to be work, working behind the scenes. He's not wrestling anymore. Oh, uh, yeah, he's done wrestling. Um, yeah. So, they are setting up, it looks like, for Randy Orton to take the title off of Drew. Yeah, that's another one I don't agree with. What, taking the title off of Drew? Yeah, I like Drew McIntyre as champion. I can't get behind the whole one, two, three thing. I can't get behind that. I, I, I like heel Drew. I like dickhead Drew. When, see, okay, this was an issue for me. Okay, so before he signed with Impact, Heath came out and did that one-off one for the mm -hmm. Raw mm -hmm. and, against Drew. And mm – -hmm. Everything he said was like Drew couldn't fight back on it. He was like, you know, you you said you'd be there for me. You said you'd fight for me. Uh, you promised me a title match. You said you always be there for my kids, not my eighteen kids, but my two real daughters at home. You said you'd always be there for us, and you never called. You never checked in on me, and that felt real. And the problem was, is that made Drew look like a fucking prick. Mm -hmm. And it's like you want Drew to be this face on your television, be the happy-go-lucky champion. But now you're kind of making him look like a dickhead out here. So you're kind of burying him, in essence, to what he should be doing. Well, what I would have done in that situation is, if I was writing that, I would have had Drew play off of that and turn into a dick. Mm -hmm. And be like, you really think I care about, you know, Randy Orton? I don't care about my friend, kids, or family, you know, this, that, and the other. I wouldn't keep going having to do babyface and shit like that. Yeah, uh, the baby face thing is kind of getting old. I really want Drew to kind of turn around and, you know, like, you know, be a heel because that's – well, I remember when – did we go to that Raw? No, that was me and my wife. Um, There was a Raw that Dolph and Drew were there, and they were playing off the crowd great. They were they were heels, and they did a good job of it. I think Drew's a better heel than a face, honestly. Well, I mean, besides Orange Cassidy – Name me a true face that's in wrestling now. A true face in wrestling. Ricochet. Our truth. Um, who else? Kofi, Big E. These are true faces. These are not true faces that are in the that are in the game though. Like that are in like title contention, you know, not twenty four. True seven. faces true faces in title contention. Um, I don't know, like it could be main eventers, you know. That could be main eventers. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mm, you got me, son. Mox. Yeah. Mox is a face. I mean, right. yeah, but is he a face? Is he a baby face or is he a heel persona that just turned baby face? Not everybody is Stone Cold Steve Austin, sir. That's what I'm saying. Not everybody is Stone Cold. I mean, you know, that, 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 that's. I'm trying to read your signs right now. No, I'm not saying that everyone is, but. No, I'm trying Mox. to read the signs in the crowd. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking jackass! But like, um, I just, I mean, Mox has the bad boy heel persona, but it gets over with the crowd. Dude, is that the Raw from like December twenty third, nineteen ninety six, ninety seven? Because that's exactly what that looks like back in like that era. Yeah, we're sitting right there. Where are you? Oh shit! There I am, right you there. Wanna, you want to zoom in? Yeah, there. right, right there. There I am. Look, it's right there. Look, see? I'm right there. Uh, it has to be below your waist, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything big coming on? Uh, we have, we believe, Matt Cardona finally going to be making his debut. 
This week oh. it's against War, uh, War Dog. War Horse. War Horse. War Horse. War Dog. Mm-hmm. War Dog. Hey, War Dog. Give me another baby, son of a bitch. Um, and if you, you should, if you, sh- you should YouTube War Horse. War Horse's matches. I did. I YouTubed his match with OC. Mm-hmm. Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. Um, everything was good about that match except for the fucking referee. <laughs> <laughs> the referee sucked, dick. Uh, he reminded me, dude. I, I'll talk. To, I'll tell you after he reminded me of because I do not want to get in any type of trouble with any sponsors we may have with our show. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but- no. Yeah, I, that was a good match. Uh, but what does he say? I'm coming for some ass. Mm-hmm. Is that how he says? Yeah. There's a couple of guys that I think are you could see um, in the near future for the TNT title. You have um, Matt Cardona, which I've said that for the past couple of weeks. I think it's going to be very soon, but I think they want to let the um, – well, this he, raw, this dynamite was already taped, so he wasn't eligible for. Right, right, right. But pressure. I don't think that they don't want to. Um, they don't want the internet to be buzzing because it that kind of like threw the allure of the Good Brothers signing with Impact is the the internet already knew, you know. Yeah. Um, then there's also another one. Um, you're gonna laugh when I tell you this, but there's a guy. His name is Effie. E. E F F Y. Um, he is a homosexual wrestler. He's a. I thought Dalton Castle was already there. No, he's a very, very good wrestler. Very, very good. Um, he has like he has some comedy matches. It's kind of like Orange Cassidy. Like you know, starts off comedy, comedic, but then gets into traditional wrestling, you know, and everything like that. Very, very good. I can see him coming in. Um, there's Alex Alexander Hammerstein. Um, he's from MLW. He was in the group with um, MJF, the trio. What were they, the Million Dollar Babies or some shit like that? Dude, can we petition for Alex Ocean to get a match? Dude, I would love for Alex Ocean to get a match. Dude, how crazy would that be? Like, where's agents? <laughs> we're producing for Hey, Cody, we know what you want. Reach on mm-hmm. out to us. We got you. We got the good shit. Like, I mean, I think the Alex Ocean. break kid. Mm-hmm. Oceans never die. That's it. But I think um, Alex Ocean would probably be good. Um, Alexander Hammerstein, like I said. Um, I mean, James not? Storm. Yeah, uh, James Storm. But here's the thing. You, you already I'm know. on James Storm. I want him in there so bad. You already know James Storm's going to lose, though. That's fine. I, th- I still think it's a good match, and I think James Storm being on TV will be good for him again. He, he's a very good wrestler to be on TV. I think Nick Aldis. Why not have yeah. a rematch? You know, Nick Aldis. Yeah. Um, uh, why not have Brian Pillman Jr. wrestle for it? I mean, you had him on Dynamite. He got the shit kicked in by Brian Cage. Dude, dude I watched a match of his. Um, shit, who did he fight? It was the other day he posted it on Twitter. That was a good match. I forget who he fought. But that was a da- good damn good match. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like, Brian, there's, Brian there's a Pilmans lot of guys. there's a lot of guys like that are out there. That I mean, how about a surprise entrance? Why not Tessa Blanchard? Tessa's uh, I thought she was signing with NXT. I thought that was pretty much in the books. Well, I mean, it's not guaranteed yet, but for a one-off, a one-off, have Tessa Blanchard come in, <laughs> dude. Speaking of Tessa, did you see what she wanted for the title? Yeah, two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. She, she holding, wanted. She was holding hostage. She threw it in her fridge. <laughs> she wanted two hundred thousand, but now I guess TNA has come out with all new belts. Yeah, they did. Yeah, so they were like, "You keep that piece of shit." Yeah, well, because she was in Mexico because it was around that time that everyone got quarantined because her, like I said, her boyfriend or her fiance wrestles in Mexico. She was wrestling in Mexico, unadvertised, still under contract with TNA as the champion, not bringing the champion to the shows. So it was like. She was very backdoor shit. Like, it was very weird. Well, they kept asking her to cut promos, and she kept saying no. Yeah, because she was wrestling <laughs> at another comp- for another company. Yeah. So yeah, It was very weird. Did you see um, – whatchamacallit? Did you see um, – ah, shit. What was it? Uh, Big Swole? And her yeah. comments on Rock. Yeah. He, said, he she went up Dude. in his face and said, I can beat your ass. Yeah, bro. 
Dude, Big Swole is out of control. And she's like four foot three. <laughs> I can just imagine. I would love to see Brock Lesnar's face when she said that. He's, he had to laugh at her. Mm, like, yeah, like, oh, I could just imagine, like, when him and Undertaker sat up and they started laughing at each other. Like, that's the laugh that he did to her right in her face. Like, just sort of just dying belly laugh right in her face. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tammy Lynn Cinch got arrested again. Again, so Sonny's back in jail. What did she do this time? Um, it was um, evading arrest. Um, because she was she got evading being pulled over, and it was violating parole and something like that. So, dude, did you see this twenty hours ago? AJ Styles on his Twitch stream. No. AJ Styles on his Twitch stream was speaking to fans. A fan asked the Intercontinental Champion, would we ever see you in AEW? His response, never say never. Oh, yeah. I, I saw that a couple. Um, I think I saw it yesterday. Yeah, it came out 20 hours. So, yesterday, yeah, you probably saw it. But that's pretty, far, that's pretty wild. I, I would like to see AJ in uh, AEW, actually. I think mm-hmm. there's some good people in there that he could wrestle. And I think he got a very good match against certain wrestlers. Um, you know, it'll be a fun match. You know who I think would do well with him. I think, I think he could do a good job putting Trent out there. I think if he had a singles match with Trent, I think that'd be a very good match. Oh, I think AJ Styles and Ricky Starks would be a good match too. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I want to see Trent do good things, man. Yeah. So, uh, um, Impact released their, um, numbers for the first time, 2020. How they do this year, how they do. Um, the ratings only go back a few weeks, but they were unpublished prior to the point. The results show a 4% rise from last week following the Slammiversary pay-per-view. The company drew a 0. .05 in the coveted 18 to 49 demographic. To compare, Dynamite brought a 0. .32 rating as NXT brought a 0. .17 in the same demographic for their programming this week. Yeah, Dynamite, what, 845,000? Mm-hmm. They peaked over a million during the Young Bucks and Butcher the Blade match. The final five minutes. That's over wild. a million viewers. But that crazy thing is it was over a million views, viewers, but in the 1849 demo, it was only 512,000. Wow. Dude, that, that, is, it's, that was nuts. Like, that That's was their insane. claim to fame. Yeah, that was their claim to fame. Yeah, AEW shit on NXT this past week. Yeah, completely. I, we said that right at the beginning. Yeah. Ooh, hold on. I got another one. Former WC, WWE superstar wants in on Cody's AEW Open Challenge. Um, no way. Shut up. JTG from Crime Time released a fan art that said... It put him in the place. Like, let's see. Can you see it? A little bit, yeah. No, it's kind of blurry. Look. I'm trying, bro. It's JTG in there? Yeah. Looks like Amon Amon Johnson. And um, Um, so he says he wouldn't mind having an open shot. Did you see what Dax posted? Apparently yesterday it was Shawn Michaels' birthday, mm-hmm. and Dax posted, "It's Shawn Michaels' birthday. Here's a picture of the greatest wrestler to ever lace up a pair of boots." And he posted a picture of Bret Hart. <laughs> so uh, uh, Rusev posted, "No at symbol question mark question mark," and then Road Dog replied, "No guts. Be well, Miro." God bless you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, looks like they're. Uh, Oh, so, and then Cash replied, I just saw this. Uh, Yeah, man, we're the ones with no guts. Definitely not you. Be well. And then he's, and then Road Dog replied, definitely not. And then, oh, wow. So then Cash once again responded, definitely a good guy that never talks shit about talent as soon as they'd walk away as def and definitely wouldn't try to bury anyone that disagreed with him. Definitely. Hmm. Dude, they're. Huh, so Road Dog and FTR just ain't seen eye to eye, are we? <laughs> um, 
Dude. Shit, I was going to say something and I totally forgot. Gosh darn it. Sorry, did I tickle your peaker? No, man. It was something, it was something about what you were saying. I totally fucking forgot. God, oh, damn it. And it was, but it was something that I saw on my phone that. Mm. Oh, it was the, um, will WWE punish the NXT superstar for spoiling the great American bash in, um, ending? I mean, what can you do? He, they, um, NXT made, um, it, oh, it was that guy. It was one of those big, um, what are they? Um, the one with, um, Malcolm Bivens as their manager. Indus shares. Yeah. Um, it was him that it was his Snapchat. What an idiot. Mm-hmm. That's Can why I haven't him. been on TV. Right. There you go. There's the consequences right there. Yeah. Um, but Matt Bloom came out and said there's no significant heat on him and no punishment is expected, but they're not on TV. In, in fact, the, the end of the, the end of the article, it says end share hasn't been mentioned on WWE television for a number of weeks, but it's likely they'll be back soon. Oh, brother. Yo, NXT takeover 30. They're at 30 already. Takeovers? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been moved from August 30th to August 22nd, which tells me that we're going to have less time for story buildups. Great. Same old NXT. Let's just jump right in. I bet you Damian Priest is fighting uh, Cameron Grimes. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Um, oh, man. I don't know. Well, there, I was going to bring up something. I, I remember some. Oh, uh, so they have talked about a second show for AEW. Hmm? However, Tony Khan is a owner of a football team. So Sundays is out. Mondays is out. Thursdays is out. And some Saturdays are out. That Maybe leaves Tuesday. Friday. No, head I, think to head. Tuesday. I think it's going to be Tuesday. Why not go head to head? No, because I think what they're going to do, it's going to be AEW Dark on Tuesday. It's going to go from YouTube to TBS. I think you should move Dynamite to Friday night and go head to head with SmackDown. Show them you can take on everybody. No, you want to bury this. You you got to look at it this way. NXT was the workhorse for WWE for a year and a half. And now that AEW has proved Mm -hmm. that NXT can't hold a candlelight to them. Why not go up against head up Friday night? Friday night dynamite, baby. That gets me ready to go. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. And then put your dark. I would put dark against NXT and just be like, yo, our second show destroys you. Because you know what dark is, right? Dark is all the wrestlers that they they sign. Yeah, that they sign. And they're like, oh, shit, that guy is not as good as we thought (laughs) he was when we watched him in the bar. Luther. Exactly. They're like, oh, you remember that guy we watched in the bar and we signed him to six figures? Yeah, mm-hmm. we fucked up. We fucked up. We need to make a second show. Right. <laughs> um, but no, man, that's what Dark has become. Dark has become, oh, who, who, what wrestlers suck on our fucking contracts? Oh, there you go. Put them on. We have, tonight we have Griff Garrison against Luther. <laughs> and Allie's the referee. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another thing I, I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, so the Blade and Allie are married in real life. That's interesting. But Allie and QT Marshall are having an on-screen romance. QT Marshall, about a month ago, tested positive for the, the coronavirus. Oh, is that what happened to him? Yeah, yeah. And they're, but they were kissing, so like, I, I don't know. Like, how did that work out? If I was a Blade, I'd be cutting someone's chubby, chubby <laughs> pee-pee. Chubby, chubby, pee pee. I chubby, chubby, yo, pee pee. Wait, I just didn't. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. But yeah, they're married in real life. Hmm. Just like, um, uh, I think it's Mickey James is married to Nick Aldis. And Cardona is with who? Chelsea Again? Green. Chelsea Green. Hmm? And then which one is uh, the Iconics? Which one is she married to? Sean Spears. 
Sean Spears. That's what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. What's going on with Sean Spears? I don't know. He needs to fucking die. Damn, bro, that's a little harsh. I, I don't like. I never liked him. I never liked. I never liked him as Ty Dillinger. You need um, like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. No. I had to do it 10 times. You know, and another thing, too, in wrestling that um, used to be over 20 years ago, and it's now they're trying to keep doing it and try to use it again, is when they get thrown into the corner. And the guy gets up on the, like the second turnbuckle and punches them ten times. That okay? When we were younger, okay, understandable that you know that might get a little pop. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you're doing all these flips, all these like dives and shit like that. Don't throw somebody into the corner for and then punch them for ten. You know, because if you punch them for real, that person's not getting out of that corner. Chris. We're not the only ones watching, but I know we grew up with wrestling, but wrestling is still for younger kids. You gotta no, remember. yeah, I understand that, but it's, I mean, the demographics don't show that. The demographics are showing half a million to a million people are watching from 18 to 45. How do they know my age? I don't know. I go in the ratings. How do they know the demographic of my age? How do they know that I'm 17, not 18? Like I tell my wife, we have computers in our hands that I can... Look it up for you. Please do that. And as you're doing that, I will talk about. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Let's talk about CCW. They're doing their show tonight. Mm-hmm. And it looks like Carlito was there. No, I know Bill Alfonso, super crazy, was there. How do you. How do. Age. Age. Demographics. Yeah, man. Let's see. What else is going on right now? Uh, oh, if you have not seen, Adam Cole and Pat McAfee got into it. That yeah, was interesting. That, that was a work. The key demographic is in term of blah, 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 blah. vary by outlet, time of day, and prog- programming type, but they are generally composed of individuals who are younger and more affluent than the general public. Young adult viewers have been TV's target demographic for decades because they were blah, 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 blah. most key demographic groups consist of eight adults who are somewhere in the age between 18 and 54. For example, the key demographic for reality television is women with disposable incomes aged 18 to 34. That doesn't. But they don't. How, how do they know my age? Right. I don't know. That's why I think all these shits are bullshit, man. I think you're bullshit. Man. Kurt Hawkins takes a jibe at Vince McMahon after return. I think it's called jab. Um, they said jibe, J I B E, brother. Um, it's I think it's called jib, by the way. Um, jib. but uh, yeah, I saw a tweet. It was um a picture, and it was like. I'm sorry. I love you. Um, parentheses, super kick. It was like a play on Shawn Michaels uh, and Ric Flair's last match. For what? I'm sorry. It, it, he, he tweeted at Vince McMahon, thank you, I'm sorry, and I love you. Oh, yeah, I did see that live yeah. on his Twitter. I did yeah. see that, yeah. Um, so two matches announced for next week's Impact uh, would be – Eddie Edwards versus Trey for mm-hmm. the Impact title. And mm-hmm. the Good Brothers versus Reno Scum. Mm-hmm. You know about Reno Scum? He is. You're the scum between my toes. Who's this bigger guy? Um, is that so- um, Sawyer Fulton or Madman Fulton? With the mohawk and like the pork chop sideburns. Looks like Macy Gray. Hold on. Reno Scum. Oh, no, that's not. I don't know. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. I know who those are. Uh, and Luster the Legend. No, I've seen them wrestle, but I don't know who they are. 
Yeah, I'm just going through some of my updates here. Booker T says fans can go to hell with the Naomi deserves better hashtag. <laughs> I guess Booker T is not a fan of Naomi deserves more hashtag. No, he put that out. Yeah, do you know why he fucking, do you know why he said that though? Why? He said people think you are supposed to be given everything. You have to earn it in this company. Nobody deserves anything. You're not given based anything off merit. You are giving it because you earn it, you know? And I guess uh, he's tired of the new age fans kind of just telling, oh, people deserve it, so let's give it to them. No. We all knew who was going to win the title in Orlando at WrestleMania. Right. It was Naomi. We all knew that because it was our hometown. And, oh, my God, it's my hometown. I deserve it. No, you don't. You, you got it because you're a good wrestler. Now you're not at the top anymore because you're not the top person anymore. Right. You know, not everybody's the rock. Not everybody can sit on top for fucking, you know, six, seven years at a time. Right. Unless you're John Cena, then you're sitting on top for 15 years. Yeah, in a couple of those years, you you only have one match a year. Hey, man, when John Cena's on TV, it sells. You can't argue that. Whew. So can we talk about Eddie Kingston's uh, promo again? Because, God, <laughs> I've watched it again like another 10 times. Oh, on, no. I swear on my beautiful mother's eyes, I will rip your eye out. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot murder ones at me, homie. <laughs> God, <laughs> Jesus, he's amazing. Yeah. The more I watch it, the more I want him in fucking AEW every week. So. Yeah. All right, I think that's about it. Show went well. I was very show happy with well. this show. I was very happy with this show. So, uh, everybody, please make sure you leave in the comments who you think won the pay-per-views tonight. This guy did not like my Daniel Bryan AMJF match. I'm very upset about that. I thought I put a lot of work into that match. Mm. However, I think my Bullet Club leaders match uh, might have might have stole the night. I, you know, that's a high flying match right there. All four of them guys are just fucking raising hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I get some fucking credit over here, man? I am your partner in this for life. We are stuck in this, and you don't give me any fucking credit. My pay per view shit on yours. Your pay per view was a drizzling shits. No, yours was a jizzling, drizzling shit. You got an eight-man, big-man battle royal. Excuse me, sir. It's called the big-man, eight-man elimination match. Okay. I'm surprised that Benicio, Del Taco, Del Toro, uh, El Gordita. That's Fantasmo. Fantasmo, <laughs> El Toro, Delgado, El Loco. And Gordito, uh, Phoenix, Joaquin, Wild, Mendoza. <laughs> Joaquin, Wild, Mendoza. <laughs> Gordito, Phoenix. <laughs> no. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. We appreciate you tuning in tonight. Make sure you follow us at Par- Podcast Paradox on Twitter. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Make buy sure you swallow merch. us all the way. Buy our merch. And buy our merch. Make sure you guys swallow us on here. All <laughs> right. Make sure you too sweet me when you see me. Peace.